Hello folks, this is Tom from anti-proton.com and this is a box. It showed up at my house this morning and it was radioactive. What could be inside of the box? Well, I've already removed the packing slip because honestly you don't you don't really need to see my address. But anyhow, let's figure it out. What could be in this box? Now I have a CDV 700, an old an old um, um, civil defense Geiger counter. It's set to the times one position, so it's reading zero, 100, 200, or 300 counts per minute. You notice the dials around maybe 10 to 20 counts per minute right now. If we take the probe and we put it on the box <clears throat> and give it about seven seconds to catch up, and you'll see it's going up a little, but not much. The CDV700 doesn't really think that this box is particularly radioactive. If I put it on the side here, it gets a little bit better. This box is not uniformly radioactive. Various parts are more radioactive than others. What could be in this box? Well, the CDV700's had a go at it, and it's not enough to be noticeable. Let's take, let's take the inspector and see what it sees. The inspector is getting a background of 30 to 40 counts per minute, maybe as high as 50. So. Well, obviously, it's doing a better job. That's the Pancake Geiger Mueller tube here for you. This is an LND type 7317 tube, very sensitive. <clears throat> Whatever's in this, the inspector thinks it's radioactive. You can give that a minute to climb. But I'd like to know what's in it before I open it. So, we're going to have to do a little bit of isotope identification. So we're maxing out at about 300, plus or minus. On the side here, it seems to be a little worse. Maybe not. Maybe if I go down a little bit? Well, depending on where I go, I can get uh, approximately 300 counts per minute. But let's do a better job than that. Let's see here. This is a um, PDA. This PDA is connected to a polymaster. Now, <clears throat> let me see if I can prop this up so you can see it. Oh look, a glare is right in the middle of the screen. How useful that glare is. I'll just hold it in my hand because otherwise the glare is going to be a problem. The screen is nice in here. It's easy to see if you're a person. It's terrible to see if you are um, looking at it through a, through a camera. So, let me, um, let me take the um, screen here. So you can see we're at about uh, 15 counts per second, <clears throat> 16, and I'm going to take the polymaster, which is already alarming, and put it right on top. What does it do? <clears throat> Excuse me, 27 counts per second, 29, 31, 69, 59, and you see the number here, the percentage of inaccuracy is dropping, 64 counts per second, 63. So probably around 63, 64 counts per second, right? And we can switch over to gamma measurement and see what kind of dose this thing's putting off. 0.8 microsieverts per hour. Not bad. Not bad at all. 0.8 microsieverts per hour. Well, obviously there's something in this. Let's see if we can figure out what it is. <clears throat> we're going to select, go to the polymaster here, we're going to select um, quick identification. Now quick identification is going to quickly, well, quickly identify. Let me move this up here so you can see it better. Hmm. Problem is if I do that it blocks the polymaster, but you know what, that's just going to have to be good enough. Go polymaster, go! Now let's see how long it takes it. Four seconds, six seconds, eight, 10, well, it's taking a while, 14 seconds, oh there we go, according to this it's sodium 22, now sodium 22 is a radioactive isotope, let me move up here so you can see it, let's uh, take a spectrum ourselves and see if that looks right, you know because isotope identifiers are notoriously incorrect, and you never trust an isotope identifier straight up, you should always look at the spectrum. They're useful tools, don't get me wrong, but you should also look at the spectrum. So what's our spectrum look like? Okay. This is counts. 
And this is energy going from low to high. This is photon energy. Oh, look at that. Right dead down the middle, 500 kiloelectron volts. I know that looks pretty close to an annihilation peak to me. And look at that. Yeah, this is looking a lot like, oh, look at that, 1245 right in the dot. Yeah, I think we have a, I think we have sodium-22 here, friends. Now, let's pull it out of the box now that we're pretty sure it's just harmless sodium-22. And before we do that, let me stop the accumulation here. Put this aside. Let's, uh, let's consult our handy-dandy chart of what's legal. Let's see. Barium-133, carbon-14, these are things that are legal to own. See? U.S. Um, uh, uh, radioactive material, limited quantity, blah, blah, blah. Here we go. Sodium-22, I can have up to 10 microcuries of it. Oh my god, what a humongous amount. Well, I don't have 10 microcuries, that's for sure. <clears throat> this I just got from Spectrum Techniques. This is a 1 microcurie if you live in the United States, or if you live anywhere else, it's uh, 37 kilobecquerels of sodium-22. So let's open it up. Oops, probably should cut away from yourself, not towards yourself. That is how not to treat a CDV700. I'm sorry, baby. I didn't mean to let you drop. Luckily, the, the damn things are absolutely indestructible. How not to treat your CDV700. So let me cut this open. And cut this open here. All right. There. Let me get this open. There we are. What's this? Spectrum Techniques. Your nuclear science specialists. Applications. Stuff that you can do with this. Wow. Well, I can do all of these things. Thank you. If I didn't know that, though, that would be useful information. And here it is. <clears throat> yeah, 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 I know. It's illegal. That's just a bunch of t technical stuff telling you that it's legal. Nothing else in the box, right? Okay, let's put, put the box away. All right, let's get this out. Oh, look, a peanut. All right, where's my knife? Honestly put, how can you do anything without a knife? Cut away from yourself. I've cut myself accidentally too many times with a knife. That would be one of the reasons I always make a big deal about that. I'm sure everybody's noticed. All right. Oops, there goes my cap. So, sodium-22. And that is the same paper I showed you before. All right, so chuck that away. Neat. Ah, crap, how's that open? God, is it sealed? Okay. I guess the golden rule is this. If you can't open it, you can't own it. Is it sealed around the outside? What the heck? Am I just that wussy? I mean, I am a card-carrying nerd, right? Nerds have no strength. There it goes. I guess I'm just really wussy. Look at that. Yay. Yay, yay, yay. All right, so let's see. Let's get the inspector, and let's see what the inspector does. Okay. How much gamma? Flip the probe over and see what the gamma reading is. Gamma's not too high. This is a uh, beta emitter, actually. Okay, let's put that aside. Now let's see. Does the uh, poor, abused CDV700 do a better job? Okay. Yeah, yeah, it does. Times ten. Okay, times 100, at times 100. 
Perfect. Okay, you have now witnessed the two times in my entire life that this has fallen. We have now learned our lesson. We cannot put this against a wall if we do not want it to fall. That rhymes, doesn't it? Okay, at times 100, we're looking at 0, 10,000, 20,000, 30,000. The beta shield is open, so we're getting betas and gammas. And we're looking at about 4,000 counts per minute. If we close the beta shield and try not to drop the freaking CDV700 again, good job, Tom. Not as much. We'll set it to times 10. So now it is 0. Uh, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, and let's see what we get in gamma. Gam okay, that's it. National drop all my equipment in. I don't know what to tell you. So, a little bit over 3,000. Not bad. So, now that I've shown you how not to handle your equipment, now that I've shown you how to drop your CDV 700, Apparently I can't hold anything today. I, I don't even know why I'm allowed to hold the Polymaster. I just keep dropping everything. All right, <clears throat> let's see if we can detect some detector artifacts. So we'll put this here. Put that right on top of it, right on this. This is a cesium iodide thallium dope detector. And let's see what we can see. First and foremost, let's go to gamma measurement. And see what we get. We're at 24 microsieverts per hour. 21. It's dropping. That's on contact, by the way. Pretty potent stuff. 21 microsieverts per hour. 20. It's going down as the accuracy is going down or up. 12. Now it's getting more accurate. 18. 11. And it'll probably go a lot lower than this. I mean, this is still going to be a decent dose per hour. Don't get me wrong. But we're dropping down to like dental x-ray per hour pretty much at this level. So not the end of the world. That means, based on what you're saying, when you go get one of those little bite wig um, uh, dental x-rays, they put the thing in your mouth and you bite down on it and they, and they shoot you with it, that x-ray they zap you with is, is about equal to one hour of holding this. Keep in mind that when you go to the dentist, they usually hit you with like four or five of those things too. So just consider it like that. All right, so... Let's start our, yeah, I know it's a high count rate, who cares? I didn't see what the count rate was, but it was, but it looked really high, so we'll look at it in a minute. We'll get that spectrum going, and let's look at a, ski, at a, a, a schematic of, of the decay. I actually drew one out today just for fun. Focus, there. And if you can see this, I hope you can see this. Um, Sodium-22 has a half-life of 2.6 years. It beta positive decays down to neon 22. It's not actually neon 22M. It's actually just neon 22 in a highly unstable state. And it drops down then to neon 22's ground state. It is capable of dropping, uh, dropping straight down to the ground state via electron capture. So that's kind of interesting. Basically put what this thing does is it can emit a positron and it does it two ways. One way is it grabs a free electron and it says, come over here, takes the energy from that electron and gives, it the, uh, gives the proton enough extra energy to turn into a neutron because neutrons are heavier than protons and require more energy for that transformation. The second thing it can do is um, if the binding energy is lower for this uh, uh, um, daughter than it is for this parent isotope, it can actually just immediately beta decay and beta positive decay, which is kind of interesting. Beta positive decay... Um, uh, typically occurs in a um, atom where you're just a little bit too proton heavy, which these guys are. Anyhow, let's see what energies we, energies we expect to see. We expect to see a backscatter peak from the primary photo peak at 212, an annihilation peak from the antimatter at 511. Yeah, this thing's kicking out antimatter. Uh, a backscatter plus five uh, plus uh, annihilation sum peak, Compton edge from the primary peak, the primary photo peak, and then a sum peak from the primary and the uh, annihilation peak. So we've got a lot of peaks we're looking at right here. Let's see what we actually find on our spectrum. Okay, 
looking at the spectrum here, and I know this isn't exactly like my UCS30 or my Gamma Spectacular or any of my larger units. This is just a little poly, but it doesn't do a bad job. Let's see what we see. Obviously, right off the right off the bat here, let me let me zoom in. There, that's good. If you see right here, at, uh, it says 450 keV. That's off a little bit, probably because of temperature. The room's temperature is changing, and this thing probably hasn't picked up to it yet. This should be about 511. Where's 511? 511's right there. So it's close, but it's off a little. This is actually caused by annihilation of anti of anti electrons. Neat. All right. Uh, let's see if we see that Compton edge. Well, let's see right here. We predicted the Compton edge to be at 1061. So it's pretty close. That's 969, 996. So this is probably the Compton edge for the primary photo peak. Let's go in there and zoom in. This is the primary photo peak right here. Should be at 1274. It's actually showing lower. It's showing at 1211. Like I said, this thing's probably a little off right this moment on its calibration. All right, <clears throat> what else are we looking for? Are there any sun peaks? I thought there would be something at 1785. There it is. Remember, that's riding a little low. See that little bump right there? That's actually a sun peak. That's the sum of when a photon for this and the photons that come out of this annihilation here both occur at the exact same time, and it makes this little sun peak here. The other sun peak I thought I would see would be at 723, which at this rate is going to be like 780 or 7, or 680 or 690. And maybe, maybe I see that there. Maybe. But anyway, the point of the matter is um, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Sodium 22, friends, sodium 22, antimatter every second of every day. Now I'm going to go get a little lead shield to stick it in. And there you go. Okay, folks, this has been Tom from anti-proton.com, and uh, thank you, Spectrum Techniques, for sending this to me super fast, like you always do. You guys are my favorite for getting isotopes, not only because you're the only place to get isotopes, but because you're also my favorites. Suck up, suck up, suck up, suck up. But anyhow, this has been Tom from anti-proton.com, and bye-bye. Uh,